The scripture I chose today is 2 Samuel, book 7, verses 18 through 29. And I'm very glad y'all are sitting down because it's kind of a long one. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family, that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant and this decree. Sovereign Lord is for a mere human. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, Sovereign Lord. For the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. How great you are, Sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you. And as we have heard with our own ears, and who is like your people Israel, and what the one nation on earth that God went out to redeem as a people for himself, and to make a name for himself, and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations and their gods from before your people, whom you have redeemed from Egypt. You have established your people Israel as your own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord God, keep forever the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house. Do as you had promised, so that your name will be great forever. Then the people will say, the Lord Almighty is God over Israel. And the house of your servant David will be established in your sight. Lord Almighty, God of Israel, you have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build a house for you. So your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy. And you have promised these good things to your servant. Now be pleased to bless the house of your servant. And may it continue forever in your sight. For you, sovereign Lord, have spoken. And with your blessing, the house of your servant will be blessed forever. I ask you to pray with me and for me. May the words that come out of my mouth ring true to your ears and settle deep in your heart. And may God bless this reading. My sermon today is called Love on Empty. Wars. Riots, pandemics, holocaust, politics, religion, famine, plagues, injustice. From the beginning of time, all these things have happened to the world. We are living with a few now, and we're living it out poorly. The news, anywhere you watch or read, it's just bad. It's bad, bad, bad. It's depressing. There's nothing good. And it reminds me of a song called Dirty Laundry by Don Henley. I think it was somewhere in the 80s. But there's one verse in particular that kind of rings in my head all the time. We got the bubble-headed bleach blonde who comes on at five. She can tell you about a plane crash with a gleam in her eye. It's interesting when people die. Give us dirty laundry. And that seems to be what the state of our world is in. We're airing all of our dirty laundry. When I get up each morning, I pray. And these last three months, few months when I've prayed, 
I've noticed something. More and more I'm aware of how broken I am. The heart-wrenching, sobbing, just brokenness that I can't fix. And it often comes next of how very alone I feel. Except that I am not alone. God, in his awesomeness, whispered a name to me. King David. And I started to read up on King David. I knew a little bit about him. I know he struck down Goliath, and he played the harp, and he was a shepherd, and he was a great warrior, and then a great king. And as I read more, I, was, I still was not understanding what I was supposed to do with this. But reading more, I finally got it. That David, with all of these great accomplishments, was still just a human being. But he prayed to God, and he worshiped God. And he didn't forget how very much he needed God in everything he did. And he praised God in good times, and he praised God in bad times. And the one time that he went off to do his own thing, the seduction of Bathsheba, the murder of her husband, it led then to the loss of David and Bathsheba's baby. And David realized how much he screwed up. He went off on his own and he did not follow what God wanted him to do. And the only one he blamed was himself. He didn't blame anybody else because he knew he did wrong before God. And without God, we can't do anything. In this absolute broken world, we cannot do anything without God. And reading up on David a little bit more, it also made me realize again that not putting God first in everything, in everything I do, in everything you do, it leaves us broken. And it leads us to poor decisions. And it leaves us empty. We need God and we need God's love always. And the other most disastrous thing that I think it does is it pulls us further away from God. And so I ask all of you today, to each of you whom I love very, very much, every single blessed one of you, I ask you, admit that you're broken And stop looking for other things to make you whole and look to God. Amen.